For years, I thought the Casio F91W and its silver brother, the A158W, would never be toppled as the best cheap digital offerings. Since reviewing those, I've showcased a string of Casio watches that have never quite lived up to that reputation, despite being solid in their own right. Today, that ends. Casio has released a new watch that could very well take the mantle from its famous forebearers. Keep watching. I've heard a few people in the comment section mention how Casio watches are a bit of an addiction. When you've bought more than one, you just can't stop. I can confirm that is most certainly the case. It's weird considering that many of their popular watches are fundamentally very similar to one another, with digital displays, retro appearances, and low-cost materials. Nevertheless, when browsing Amazon as part of our recent collaboration, something slightly unexpected cropped up. A great-looking Casio that appeared to have a 6mm thickness. Surely, this just has to be a typo, as is sometimes the case with these watch listings. I mean, that same listing has the title as a woman's watch, despite a man modeling it in the stock images. As someone who loves thin watches though, I thought I was in the perfect position to take the gamble and see if it's legit, and also compare how it realistically stacks up against some of their existing offerings. This one's retailing for just over 30 quid on Amazon, I'll link to it in the video description if you want to check one out for yourself. The watch arrived in the same basic Casio packaging that you'll be accustomed to. It's nothing special, it just gets the watch to your door in one piece. Upon opening the box, a huge grin pushed its way across my face, as I instantly knew this was an absolute banger. My goodness, is this handsome for a little digital watch? Let's get the dimensions out of the way before we get to the aesthetics though. While it appears square, the watch isn't quite as boxy as you might think, with a 33mm diameter and a 37mm lug to lug size. When combined with the bracelet, which we'll talk about later, it sits very nicely on a male wrist. Though it's certainly better suited to those after a smaller watch. It looks awesome on my six and a quarter inch wrist, for instance. What looks and feels even better is the crucial dimension, the thickness, or lack of it in this case. So no, the title isn't clickbait, this watch is indeed super thin. They kind of got the diameter wrong, claiming it was 35 millimeters, which must have included the pushes or something, but the 6mm depth is accurate. This surpasses the infamous Daniel Wellington, becoming the thinnest watch I've covered on this channel to date. For comparison, the popular F91W comes in at 8.5mm deep, which is thin in itself, but this A700 does feel notably slimmer. Fortunately, because it's not paired with a large dial like many thin fashion watches are, it doesn't feel like you have a giant frisbee on your wrist and it's instead very comfortable. It sits beautifully flat without digging in or threatening to extend over the edges of your arm. I remember having a conversation with my dad a few months back pre-lockdown and he told me how he liked that those DW watches were so thin. Thankfully, we now have a good alternative that I won't have to roast him about. So the dimensions are a great selling point, but are they worth the 40% price increase over the likes of the A158? Well, it turns out that you're not just paying extra for the sake of the slimness because in person, this watch looks and feels better. Firstly, the case finishing is something I instantly noticed and didn't expect. It's got much cleaner and sharper lines than its predecessor, which could partially be attributed to the angular styling that this watch aims for, though it does feel like it's been executed to a higher standard. Even this small difference is noticeable on camera. Despite the high shine finish, this is still constructed of resin rather than stainless steel or anything and that's a standard at these low price points. This will scratch and dent over time though, I must say it still looks rather impressive for such a budget material. I particularly like these smaller bulges around the pushers compared to some of the older models, along with the horizontal engraved lines that adorn the lug area. With the A158 and A168 watches in particular, the cases clash with the stock bracelets which are of a completely different finish and tone to one another. On this A700, the contrast is still there, but this time it looks good. The silver panels at the top of each bracelet piece may be matte, but they are about the same tone of silver as that used in the main case, giving an interesting multi-textured aesthetic that adds to the style of the watch when unfolded. The 18mm bracelet is fairly standard. It's a basic stainless steel mesh with a slide clamp securing mechanism to suit various wrist sizes. In terms of quality, it's a big step up from the rubbish bracelets found on many Casios and certainly pinches fewer hairs. 
Though it is less flexible than link bracelets, so I could see how some would say it's less comfortable. Regardless, it looks really good and it's better than I expected for such a cheap watch. It even comes with a signed buckle too. Other versions of this watch come with different bracelets though. I can't comment on their performance because I haven't tried them. I chose this one in particular because of the way it looks. You might consider this one a bit dull, but for me, I like versatile watches which I can chuck on with virtually any outfit and this fits that bill. Some of the other models do look funky and retro, such as this one with multicolored text, which I'll also link below. However, I just saw that gray dial with a slight blue undertone and knew instantly that it would suit my wardrobe very nicely. The face has a rather symmetrical design with the logo and text generally positioned towards the center. I think it looks quite classy and I generally prefer this less cluttered look compared to some of the older watches. Though I suppose that's very subjective and it depends what you like. Something that's not up for debate is the display, which is objectively an improvement. While the square on legibility is about the same as previous models I've tried, the viewing angles are much better. There's no shadow behind the characters, even at extreme angles, which is something you can't say for the venerable F91, which slowly fades away. Nevertheless, this is a very minor factor that you probably won't notice in normal usage. The module in here works in the same way as the popular Casio models that you might be familiar with, including the typical stopwatch, alarm features, and more. One upgrade is the backlight system. This doesn't appear to be the illuminator technology, rather more of a traditional side light system. The F91 has a notoriously poor side light, which thankfully isn't replicated here, as the orange glow is much brighter. Approximately equivalent to the brightness of that on the A168 in dark conditions. Keeping the module secure is the common screwed steel rear, which provides an advertised three bar water rating. Casio's reputation suggests that this watch is likely capable of better water exposure than the marketed figure. Though I'd maybe steer clear of regular swimming until this watch has proven itself. It's a similar story with battery life, which is listed as three years. That's good by regular watch standards, but maybe a little disappointing for a Casio. My dad had his F91 for close to 10 years without changing the battery. Perhaps the brand is just lowballing their claims here to be on the safe side. When it comes to identifying weaknesses and things I don't like about this watch, I'm stuck. I guess in an ideal world, I'd love to see this with stainless steel construction and potentially better glass rather than the acrylic that's in place. Yet that would come at an increased price and maybe lessen the charm. As far as 30 quid digital watches go, I'm unsure if you could find anything better right now. Especially if you're after more of a normal, sleek looking one that goes with lots of stuff and isn't too chunky. I think it's another phenomenal achievement from Casio. I'm already looking forward to their next release. To answer the title question, yeah, I think it's better than the F91. And if you're willing to splash that little bit of extra cash, I think you'll love it too. In the last review, we looked at the Seiko SNK 809 Field Watch, a far more well-known value piece. Here's where your votes placed it on our wall of watches. I'd love to know your thoughts on this new piece. I think it was released sometime late 2019. Do you think this watch is low quality Chinese garbage? Uncool, cool, or ice cold? Personally, this has been my go-to watch the last couple of weeks. The poor A158, I've left it out in the cold. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.